are on my own views, not uh, pertinently the policy of WHO or any other organizations. Uh, I uh, represent this, uh, this talk is in my personal capacity. Now I will, I have two objectives for this presentation. I'll be describing you the process of accreditation for medical institutions, especially with reference to Iraq and describing the main challenges of recognition uh, by regulatory bodies, particularly by World Federation for Medical Education, because this is one of the issues that is under discussion in Iraqi uh, health authorities. So we have seen an exponential increase in the number of medical colleges uh, in Iraq as well. Uh, till 1999, we had approximately nine medical colleges in Iraq. Then the next 10 years, we saw another six medical colleges coming up. And uh, over the past almost 12 years, we have seen the number of medical colleges almost doubling up and uh, getting to a number of uh, approximately 32 medical colleges scattered over different areas of Iraq. Now, this single issue of increase in the number of medical colleges demands there that there has to be a very robust quality assurance system that assures the quality of the graduates graduating from these medical colleges. So quality goes hand in hand. And one of the models of assuring quality that is followed globally is the, what we call the accreditation system. This is not the only model for quality assurance. There are other models, but this is one of the very prevalent models that is liked by regulatory bodies going through the accreditation process to assure that any country or an institution is following the minimum standards that are prescribed for the, assuring the quality of uh, education or uh, health for that matter. So when it comes to quality in medical education, uh, it can be defined in many different ways. There is no one set definition of uh, quality assurance, even in education or in health for various reasons. Uh, but we have to define it in one way or the other, whether adopt. Uh, it's difficult to find a constitutional definition. Uh, we tend to have some kind of operational definitions to describe the boundaries of what quality assurance means. Uh, in a particular setting. So one of the definitions could be that it's a state of reaching required standards as prescribed by an external agency. It could be external at global level or external to the institution at the national level and uh, the, ensuring that the institution meets those standards time and again um, at different points in time. So this is just one definition I'm uh, presenting here. Now, then once we have, uh, we have defined quality in terms of standards, then uh, we need to define what do we mean by standards? What are the characteristics and attributes of standards and how best the standards are described in a way that they fulfill the quality assurance needs of a particular institution or institutions in a country. So uh, for this context, we could say that standards are basic quality requirements that must be met by any program, minimum requirements or optimum requirements that must be uh, met by a program serving as benchmark against which quality is going to be uh, assured. It may also be defined as something used as a measure or a norm or a model in comparative evaluations. So uh, what we mean is that standards must be measurable. If we do not attach measurement mechanisms with standards, then it is very difficult to say whether an institution has been able to achieve the required standards or not. So measurability of standards is an important attribute of any uh, accreditation uh, system. When it comes to standards for medical education, there are various ways and we get guidance from various institutions. There could be what we call the so-called international standards. Now, these are the guiding standards according to World Federation for Medical Education. The international standards 
means uh, the standards that could be applied and contextualized to the situations in different countries at uh, uh, a global level. Uh, and one of the examples of these international standards is the standards developed by World Federation for Medical Education. Then there could be national standards, for example, um, ACGME uh, standards, that is Graduate Medical Education Council in the USA or uh, Liaison Committee for Medical Education or tomorrow's doctor uh, standards or standards that are, uh, uh, that are uh, defined by uh, and prescribed by different uh, national bodies. Uh, in particularly in Iraq case, uh, then it would be a national council for accreditation of medical colleges that exists in Iraq. So any standards that, that uh, at the Iraq level, then we can say that these are uh, the standards that are prescribed by national council for accreditation of medical colleges in Iraq. Similarly, standards could exist in different countries and these could be adopted or adapted from different other countries contextualized to the situation of education in the in a particular country or these could be the standards uh, that might be adopted or adapted from international standards uh, uh, as guiding uh, principles for example the standards from world federation for medical education now a small glimpse of what are the standards by world federation for medical education uh, these are the standards that are broadly categorized under nine areas. These are standards related to the mission and outcome of the program in an institution, the content of the program, the assessment system, educational environment, standards about student selection, faculty development, governance, program evaluation, and curriculum review. This is how World Federation for Medical Education has categorized standards into nine broad areas. Your area, depending on the situation in your country, could be different and that is perfectly fine, justifiable and acceptable by anybody. Standards have to be contextualized to the situation in a country. Areas are not important. These could be nine areas, these could be five areas, 20 areas, the number of areas is, even the number of standards is not a matter as long as they fulfill the needs of the accreditation program in a country, they are absolutely fine. So let's see uh, the uh, standards and uh, the accreditation system uh, in Iraq that is operated by what we call the National Council for Accreditation of Medical Colleges. Now, this accreditation body uh, that the document says that accreditation of medical colleges is usually carried out by national governments and the National Council for Accreditation of Medical Colleges was established in February 2015. So we have Iraqi Accreditation Council that was established in 2015 and as an expansion of the National Accreditation of Medical Colleges Program 2007, established by Ministry of Higher Education and Scientific Research, et cetera. And the council, this particular council, they issued their own standards in 2018. So we have Iraqi standards for medical education that are called National Standards for Accreditation of Medical Colleges in Iraq. Now, comparing Iraqi standards with the World Federation for Medical Education standards, just for your information, if we compare them, these standards, Iraqi standards, they are mostly adapted from the World Federation Medical Education Standards version 2015. And you can see a lot of similarities in these standards with World Federation for Medical Education 2015 standards. Now, Keep in mind that World Federation for Medical Education, they revised their standards in 2020 and December 2020, when the next revision was, uh, was introduced, it was launched. This was primarily under the leadership of Dr. Janet Grant. And uh, she uh, uh, viewed the standards from a different way. The initial standards were pretty much what we call prescriptive 
in nature and the next version was broad uh, they provided more room for adaptation to the countries the number was reduced and they were what she calls principles based uh, standards so again as, as i said the number does not matter as long as the standards fulfill the requirements of a country they are perfectly acceptable now just giving you a couple of examples comparing Iraqi standards with the World Federation for Medical Education Standards. This is a comparison I'm making with 2015 standards. For example, on the left side are WEFMI standards related to educational program. I'm just giving you two examples to show you how standards actually look like. So WEFMI standard 2.1 is about curriculum model and instructional method, and it says Again, WEFMI has divided them into basic standards and quality standards. Basic standards are a must, quality standards are optional. So the basic standard, I'm just giving you one example. It says that the medical school must define the curriculum model, that is B2.1.1. Define the instructional and learning methods employed. Ensure that the curriculum prepares the students for lifelong learning and ensure that the curriculum is delivered in accordance with principles of equality. Now, this is one broad standard that pertains to curriculum models and instructional method uh, by WFP. And what is the reciprocal standard by uh, Iraqi medical uh, accreditation body? They say that the medical college must define the overall curriculum use a curriculum and instructional learning methods that stimulate, prepare, and support students to take responsibility for their learning process, and ensure that the curriculum is delivered in accordance with principles of equality. And their quality standard says that the college should ensure that the curriculum prepares the students for lifelong learning. So this is as long as the standard is there and the colleges in Iraq, the 32 colleges know that how they are going to implement this standard and ensure that the quality of education it needs and is at par with this standard, this is perfectly fine and acceptable to any national or international body. So this is how standards, we can compare them from World Federation standards to national accreditation standards, uh, revision 2018 in Iraq. So what is then the accreditation process? Accreditation process has to be well defined and communicated to other stakeholders, especially medical colleges, uh, for the purpose of preparing them for accreditation uh, uh, on accreditation matters. And in this accreditation process, then application for accreditation differs, naturally differs from country to country, even the accreditation, the foundations of accreditation we have seen in some countries, it's a voluntary process in other countries, it's a mandatory process whether voluntary or man mandatory, the process and the mechanisms of conducting accreditation must be clear to all stakeholders in that particular country. Then a typical generic process, it involves uh, some kind of, uh, once the standards are established, the criteria for their measurement is established. It involves the process of self-evaluation, then site visit by an accreditation body and the decision of the accreditation body, whether the institute gets recognition, full recognition or partial recognition, or uh, the institute does not meet the criteria and needs to improve itself. Self-evaluation process then can be uh, uh, subdivided into different uh, uh, its, uh, parts. The regulatory body in this case provides accreditation standards, criteria, training is very important that the accreditation body must provide uh, training to the uh, host institutions on how they are going to prepare themselves for getting accreditation. The, it, the accreditation body must assist schools to recognize their strengths and weaknesses, identify gaps that they are going to fulfill uh, uh, fill in order to get themselves ready for uh, the site visits. 
then medical college performs uh, naturally the self inspection or self evaluation they identify the gaps they prepare their staff they prepare the institution based on what could be the structure based standards the process based standards or outcome based standards and different criteria that is expected by the accreditation body to get into the accreditation process once they have done their self evaluation they share the report with the regulatory body that shows that the institution is ready for inspection purpose only then the accreditation body initiates the process of site visit and uh, 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 get the college uh, accredited so it could be a time consuming process it could be an expensive process it, the process uh, may require a lot of effort time energy and even financial resources from the host institution so the process must be carried out in a very a rigorous manner and in a very transparent uh, way and once self evaluation is done and uh, the accreditation body uh, has uh, uh, visited the college they may grant the college of what they call full accreditation or they may find some gaps leading to partial accreditation or the decision may be no accreditation if there are big gaps in in case of then iraq uh council national council for accreditation of medical colleges in iraq that is responsible for recognition of colleges all medical colleges in iraq uh the recognition of national council for accreditation of medical colleges by world federation for medical education is one key issue that is under discussion in iraqi medical colleges i would like to draw the attention of my iraqi friends and colleagues towards this important issue in if you remember uh, the education commission for foreign medical graduates in 2010 they had issues issued that uh, the statement that all medical colleges in a country must be accredited by the accreditation body in that particular country and the accreditation body must be recognized by world federation for medical education so the national council for accreditation of medical colleges in iraq must get recognition by world federation for medical education if iraqi medical students have to appear in usmle exams and they have to go for training purposes to iraq so this is one very important point that i would like to draw your attention to so it's about accreditation of a medical school that will be done by the accreditation council in iraq and then the recognition of the accreditation body or accreditation council by world federation for medical education this is where we need to differentiate between the accreditation of a medical school a recognition of an accreditation body it does not mean that world federation for medical education will go from country to country and institution to institution and that they start accrediting uh, medical schools no world federation only recognizes accreditation bodies and in turn accreditation bodies recognize their own medical schools as per their own criteria so this is how the process works world federation for medical education they recognize national council for accreditation of medical colleges and this national council based on their process of accreditation either they recognize universities medical universities or they recognize medical colleges depending on the particular situation in in iraq so that's how the process works now world federation has already recognized this is the colleges in the region where i am working the world federation has already recognized palestine oman qatar kuwait lebanon sudan egypt iran uae saudi arabia and jordan saudi arabia these are all actually uh, recognized except jordan whose application is still in process and countries in our region i am talking of amro region countries like pakistan and um, uh, countries like iraq they uh, should also get recognized by world federation uh, 
um, by the year 2024. And the recognition criteria is uh, very much given in a very transparent manner in, uh, in, on their website, in, uh, uh, on uh, WEFP website. It's given most of the uh, accreditation bodies know the criteria. The problem is that it takes around one year to go through the, the recognition process by World Federation for Medical Education. So this is the time if they want to get recognition, they should start the recognition process as soon as possible. Now recognition or the accreditation process is not free from its challenges, be any country. Some of the challenges, particularly for Iraq that I could identify, the first challenge I would say is the leadership challenge where the leadership has to come forward and initiate the recognition and accreditation process. They have to look into the accreditation related legislations and regulations. They might have to revise their standards. They have to revise the processes, procedures, policies, and guidelines by Iraqi accreditation agency that is National Council for Accreditation. They might think of uh, even revising the standards for accreditation. They have to uh, have very well documentation of policies and procedures for accreditation, especially the lay down of uh, measurability and criteria for accreditation on how the standard would be implemented. One very important step is start training for accreditation at all levels. This is one very neglected area that we have seen that staff are not trained on how the accreditation process would be carried out. And for that matter, effective liaison between different stakeholders and net their networking for accreditation purpose is of uh, key importance. So these are some of the challenges related to accreditation I could identify in Iraq. I would end my talk here and would be pleased to answer any questions, comments from the participants. Really appreciate for listening to me. Thank you.